I've had a lot of requests to do another bench video, so I think the best way to go about doing this is we've already done a bunch of instructional videos, which we'll link in this article as well, is I'm going to take Josh through and I'm going to teach him how to bench press the same way I would anybody if they were in a seminar. I've never seen him bench press before, so I have no idea what kind of disaster I'm going to walk into or if it's going to be perfect. You never know. It's, just, it's how it was at the seminar. <clears throat> but over 12 years or whatever it's been of doing seminars and probably 20 years of showing people how to bench, I have picked up on some things and some exercises that I use before I put somebody on the bench just so they understand the verbal cueing that I'm speaking about. So if I tell them to pull their shoulder blades together or arch or put the weight on their traps or drive with their heels, we're coming from the same page because a lot of times with um, when you're showing somebody how to bench or a coach is showing somebody how to bench, you assume they know what you're talking about, but they really don't. The other thing that I do as I'm working with somebody on the bench, or any movement in particular, is I'm going to try to figure out if they're a um, visual learner or if they're an audible learner. In other words, do they have to see it done or do they have to do it? Because that does influence how you're going to cue the person through the lift. For instance, you'll say, do this or see yourself doing this and so forth. So you may see me change the way my dialogue is throughout the process based upon how he's responding. So the first thing I want to have him do is I want to teach him what it means to pull his shoulder blades together. Um, pull your shoulder blades together. So to do that, just take the band here. All I want you to do is to pull it and hold it together. Or not hold it apart. Yeah, not that far. Keep your elbow slightly bent. Turn around here. Now pull so you're pulling. Squeeze my fingers together. There. Now hold that there. You feel the tension here? Okay, let it come back in. Pull that again. When I tell you to pull your shoulder blades together, that's the action I want, okay? See the difference? He went from shrugging here, where the other one, he was pulling the shoulder blades together. So do it again. <clears throat> pull the shoulder blades together. There is a big difference between the two, okay? Again. Again, okay, now drop your arms a little bit to where it would be a bench. Right there, same thing. Pull your shoulder blades together, pull it out further. Good. And out. Again. Okay, now drop your hands a little bit lower. You'll never be this low because you'll probably not be using a shirt. Okay, now same thing, just the shoulder blades. There you go. Big difference here between what he was doing with the shrug. Okay. And I'll keep the band around in case we need to do it. Demo videos that you've seen with the bench press or you've read in the past, we speak about pulling the bar out of the rack. Well, a lot of times people don't quite understand what that means. So we're going to go over to the cable machine here and I'm going to show him an exercise to help illustrate what I'm talking about. What I'm going to have him do, and this is a short cable, because typically I'd want to use a little bit higher cable. So I'm going to have him squat down a little bit so he's going to look a little bit like an idiot. Um, you want to have the bar start about where it would be if you were to take the bar out of the rack. And from here, um, I'm using what's called a rotator bar here. More than likely you won't have one, but I can tell you where to get one. Um, I like that because it angles up on each end so it's easier to be able to feel the lats pull. So if all I'm going to have to do is just basically a straight arm pull down from here to here. But with that, focus on make, making sure he's pulling with his lats. So you're going to actually bend your knees a little bit. Go a little bit wider so you're up on the hump. You can try to use a lat bar flipped backwards. <clears throat> but you got to watch it because most have a swivel on it. Okay, arch your back. Now all I want you to do is to flex from here and pull down. Good. And squeeze your lats. Bring it back. And then pull here. Squeeze your lats. He's doing real good with this, okay? <laughs> Many times I'll have somebody do this, the tension's going to be here or it's going to be in the lower back. When I say pull the bar out of the rack or with your lats, so that's what I want to look for. I want to feel and I want him to feel this is what needs to be contracting when he pulls it out, not a tricep extension. Now we're going to go back over to the bench. Next one is putting weight on your traps. So what I'm going to have you do here, lay on the bench like you're going to bench. This one I actually picked up from J.M. Blakely many years ago. I want you to go ahead and put your, you can put your hands on the bar, just don't pull it out. 
I want your upper back tight, your shoulder blades together. Now, put their feet on the bench. Yeah, so your heels are there. Now, what I want you to do is throw your hips up into a bridge. Higher, higher, higher. Let the weight come into your traps. You feel all that weight on your trap? Put your feet on the floor. You can put them out in front of you, pull them behind you. You can do whatever you want to do. Get that same feeling in your trap. Is that it? Okay. People will ask, how do you find the proper foot position? That's how we do it. Go ahead, relax. <clears throat> We're looking for that upper back tightness and the weight on the traps. So what I'm going to have him do now is just start warming up a little bit. I'm not going to say anything at all. I might speak to the camera, but I'm not going to cue you a bit. Because what I want to see is I just want to see his normal bench. So I don't want you to change anything. I just want to see his normal bench. And the reason I do this is I want to make sure that he's warmed up. So if I have him start warming up with different technique, then he's not going to be as warmed up as he needs to be if I do have to take him over 50 to 60 percent range to see if there's going to be a breakdown. The second thing is as he warms up a little bit, I want to see, I want to watch and see what his tech, where, how his technique is. You never want to change anything that's not broken. You only want to fix what's broke. The other thing is I want to know how many things I do have to fix and then determine which is the most important. For this video, we're going to fix everything. Okay, but if it is somebody I'm working with it, I will let him know and I'll let you know in the video what the number one thing is. Because you always fix one thing at a time. You don't try to fix everything because then it just becomes a disaster in the other direction. So go ahead and start warming up. There's a lot of things that I noticed, but I have to ask questions before we continue. Um, are you benching to get your bench stronger, or are you benching to develop your chest? In other words, is this strength or bodybuilding you're looking at? Strength. Strength, okay. All right. And one of the things that I noticed right away is his elbows are going much lower than the bench, which means that your grip is in too close. Why, why do you choose that grip? Uh, it's mostly a little bit shorter. You got shoulder issues there? Yeah. Uh, and what are the extent of the issues? You don't know? Uh, it just, it's kind of bothered me. Uh, I probably heard it maybe a little over a year ago. I'm just doing stupid stuff. Okay, and bringing it in feels better for your shoulders? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this becomes like a tricky situation because to increase the bench, we need to fix the shoulder. So now all of a sudden we have to be directed to a different direction to try to help the shoulder because the bench that you're doing right now, the distance is way too long and actually the shoulder rotation is greater than if it was out further. Going out further is going to hurt more, okay, because there's more stress being put onto the shoulder, but the actual rotation is greater too. So there's ways around that where we can go back to a, a better bench grip and we're going to lower the weight anyhow. So we'll go back to a better bench grip and while you're working on getting your shoulder breath better, we'll go off uh, half a foam pad or a two board or something to restrict the range so you can still work the bench technique that you need to work to get stronger less of the impact on the shoulder while the shoulder gets better. What you're doing right there just by moving it in, it feels better, but it's not going to help the shoulder get better. You're putting a, it's not even a band-aid. Yeah. All right, it's like, it's like having a cut and then just, I don't even know how you would explain it. It's maybe, maybe it would be a band-aid, but it's a crappy band-aid. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a tape band-aid. So when you go to rip it off, it's gonna pull the scab off with it. It's not a healing band-aid. Um, the other thing I noticed warming up is he had, with 45 pounds, which is about 15%, he did four reps. He did two sets of five at 135, which is 45%, then a set of about three at 165. For a total of just over 20 repetitions, anything that happens under the 50% range when you're trying to work technique is the most crucial, because right? that's the easiest point to do that. So more repetitions need to happen at the lower percent, or more sets, not really repetitions. Your rep range is great, you know, four to five, three to five, right in there, that's great for warm up or strength. But I'd rather see, especially because of the shoulder, I'd rather see a two or three sets at 45 pounds, two or three sets at 95 pounds, two or three sets at 135, and then work up that way. That way your warm up sets can get, or your total warm up reps will be around 40, 45, which is going to put more blood into the shoulder to help it warm up better. And you're going to increase that, 
I'm going to say it's going to increase volume, but really anything under 50% doesn't happen or doesn't really affect volume that much. But it affects repetition, and everybody knows that technique is influenced by repetition. So if you're doing programs to where you're only getting 20, 25 total reps for that exercise, but you're trying to get it better and your technique needs help, I do believe I read years ago that it takes a thousand repetitions to change a motor pattern. You may want to look that up to be sure. I'm sure you know if any therapists know they can put that in there. Well, if that's the case, and we're trying to change a bench pattern, which is a motor pattern, a thousand reps at you know 30 reps per exercise, or per exercise done once a week. You, that's why people's bench don't go up from technique. So you got to get more on the back end. So we'll go ahead and we're going to break it down to the bar again, and then we'll start working on changing some things. Watching them do their warm-up sets the way they normally do is extremely important because that's where you're going to find the main issue. You can't just throw somebody on the back and say start benching. I've done it before. I've done it both ways. I've done it before where I'm trying to show 30 people how to bench, and that's really the only way you can get it done. The form and the and it, it doesn't stick because it's easy to get somebody to bench the bar or 135 or 95 pounds right. It's a whole different thing when they leave and have to do it on their own and their problems you didn't even see. So go ahead and now we're going to start working on the technique. When he's using the bar because the bar is light and I'm working on body position, I'm going to brace the bar down. I need you to get tight on your upper back. Grip out. Let's put your... I'm not going to go real wide because he's super close. Up high in the traps. When you bench, you should be extremely uncomfortable. It's tight shoulder blades, pull out, squeeze the bar, now go. Press, try to push in a straight line as you go up. I don't want you flaring or doing anything right now. Uh, now if you look at it, keep going, I want you to five. If you look at his elbow position now, his elbows are just barely getting to the top of the pack, which is perfect. Where he was before, his elbows were a couple inches under the pack. Okay, rack it. I'll show you. Go ahead and let your back drop like it normally was. Grab with your old grip. Take the bar out. Take it down to your chest and pause. Now, if you see, his elbow is easily four inches lower. Go back up again. So when I'm talking, rack it. When I'm talking about the shoulder rotation, you can see how far it increased. You can also see how much the bar, how much more the bar has to travel, and how hard and why most people will miss in the bottom part of their bench if they're raw and close grip. It is, it's because of that reason. You're trying to go from, uh, actually you're trying to bench from a deficit. The same way as if you were trying to deadlift standing on box. So we'll rest for a minute. I'm going to have him do another set here, but what I noticed in the last set, but hang on a second. His body's tight. He's doing good with that. He's not squeezing the bar hard enough, and you can see because the, the veins will actually come out of your hands. You know, when you squeeze first, you can see the veins pop out of your hands and it kind of goes away because you're releasing a little bit. He's also not pulling the bar apart. So we're going to take a micro mini band, put that between your um, wrists. If it's too tight, let me know. Now grab the bar. Does it feel really easy? Uh -huh. Do you have to pull your hands apart? Yeah. Okay. All right, get your body position. Shoulders tight, legs tight, pull the bar out. Okay. All this is is a teaching aid. Just go ahead and do another warm-up set. Try to push in a straight line. What this is causing him to do is he has to now focus on trying to pull the bar apart and he has to squeeze the bar. Uh, a tighter band obviously would throw his wrists in. I went with the micro mini band because he said he had some shoulder problems and I don't want something too tight. I just want something that's going to reinforce pulling the bar apart. So after you do that, you should pretty much know in his mind what I mean by pulling the bar apart. So we'll jump to a quarter, to 95 pounds. Go ahead and do another set at 95 pounds. This will have to get a little bit tighter with. Remember the grip? You want to squeeze the bar. You know, <clears throat> the, the mental process before benching should be back tight, legs tight, squeeze as hard as you can, and then pull out with the lats. Pull out, good. Down, good, straight up, good. Good, don't worry about what I'm doing. Good, good. Okay, hold it at the top for a second. Now, I don't want, I'm gonna to try to push your knees in again. I don't want you to let me do that. Get your body tight, tighter. Now bench. Stay in that tight position. 
Bench. Bench. Good. Rack. Huge difference. Alright, <clears throat> the first few reps, what you were seeing is the bar with his pecs would flex and you'd see your pecs actually roll up as you pressed out because the leg drive from the floor wasn't transferring through to the bar because the legs were loose. It looked tight, you know, to the eye, but as soon as I went and kneed in on it, you saw how it collapsed in. It didn't collapse in bad. I've seen it collapse in so bad that people almost fall off the bench. But as soon as we tightened that up, then each rep you saw after that looked like his whole entire body was pressing through the bar, which is what we're looking for. So as, as each set goes on, I'm going to be looking for another thing to kind of build on the last, and hopefully he'll continue doing the right things so we don't have to go back and do it again. So real quick, just do another triple here. Remember, shoulder blades, up tight, tight, back tight, there. Good. So now we'll go to 135. How does the shoulder feel? The shoulder feels fine. Uh, I definitely feel like my whole body is involved in this. And I'm much more out of breath and, and work than I would just a, just instead if I just did a, a normal 25 on each side and warmed up. So. Yeah, yes. That's how it should be. And bench press is, I mean, that's why it's one of the power lifts. It's, it, it is a total body lift. So if you bench right and you bench, and if it's a heavy day, a max up day, even, even if it's a dynamic day, if you bench right the next day, pretty much everything's going to be sore from your, your legs, glutes, upper back. Usually it's upper back for most people when they start benching right. Okay, we're going to go with 135 here for a triple. Now on this one I'm going to stand back again, and I'm not going to say anything, and just let him use what he's already learned. Okay, a couple things. His, his upper back's not as tight as it should be. You can see because his chest is flexing too much again. You're a little bit too far under the bench, which will be a good indicator for you. Because if you're too far under the bench like you were there, then you know you haven't pulled yourself into a tight enough arch. You know, for you, it almost looks like, lay down real quick with your feet there, where, it don't, where you would be. For you, it looks like you almost want to be where your eyes come my way, a little more. Okay, come back, or go back again. Go back again like you were, like you were. All right, I want you to get your eyes under the bar, but not have your hips lower. Arch more, arch more, more. Come on way more. There you go, now drop your shoulders down. There. Now, come down a little more, arch more. There, right there, okay. Go from there, just do a trip. Okay. And now we have a little bit of a cluster mess there getting the bar out because now he's got to get used to getting it out when you're in a position it feels like your head's going to pop off. <laughs> All right, and which changes the dynamics again a little bit, but that first rep when everything was tight and felt uncomfortable, even being a warm-up rep and you're not even trying to push was probably twice as fast as any of the other reps that you did. All right, then after that everything kind of relaxed a little bit because in your mind you're like, thank God it's over with. <laughs> and you just, you know, you breathe out and breathe in. When you breathe your air out, a lot of times your chest and everything else will fall. Which is if you're doing max effort work or even, sometimes it's hard for triples and even hard for shirt work to hold your air. You want to try to hold your air for the set if you can, but that's not always, at least for the first rep or two. Alright, let's do another one here. I'm going to pause through a little more. Way up high. More. More. Get your grip, get your grip set, stop, start over. And get your grip set before you start working your back into it. Up, up, up. Find that track pressure that we found at the very beginning when you're in that big arch. Okay, drive your legs tight. There you go. Make yourself as uncomfortable as you can. Pull the bar out with your lats. Good. Go. Straight. Good. Again, 
Straight. Good. Legs tight. Go. Good. Rack. Okay, I'll have him rest for a minute. Okay, I'm going to have him do a single here, but something that you should notice is he's sweating and he's breathing hard and we haven't even got through a work set yet. You know, right now we're just, at this point we're up to where his warm-up set ended before and have probably done triple the reps and worked the technique a lot harder. So all I want to see here is a single, but I want everything perfect. Good. I want squeeze harder, harder, back harder. Now, get way up high, way up, keep the hips down though. Now, push your heels into the floor. No, 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 keep them back, keep them back. If they won't hit the floor, reset. I got you all messed up now. <laughs> if your feet move after your set, you need to start all the way over. Okay, because your feet are going to be the one thing that sets the base for everything else. So all I'm going to add to the mix is now I want you to pull air into your stomach and I want you to push your heels down. So upper back tight, grip tight, pull the bar apart, belly full of air, try to push your heels into the floor. There you go, tight. Up, good, rack. How did that feel on your shoulder? You didn't feel anything? All right, when you warmed up, when you did that with 175, you felt your shoulder a little bit, you told me that. Okay, so now we're back to a wider grip, which bothered his shoulder before, and it doesn't bother his shoulder. A lot of that has to do with the technique, and that's why a lot of shoulder problems happen from the bench press, is because of poor technique and because of over-rotation. Granted, there are going to be a lot of shoulder problems in the bench press just because of overuse, poor programming, and training, but the majority of it's going to come from uh, poor technique. So we're going to go, just go another dime, and we'll do a single there. I don't want to turn this into a full workout because he will train later. You want to end it as good as it started. And a lot of times when you go into a full workout, there's going to be a little bit of a, there's going to be a crossover because percent will always influence technique. So we're trying to stay away from that a little bit. So, and if I do my job, then all his warm up sets up into the work sets will always be done with perfect technique and then, then that will carry through into the work set. Okay, the reason why I'm having him push in a straight line instead of flaring is because just by looking at his torso, his arm length and everything else, and because of the shoulder problem, I don't want him turning and actually I'll show you why. I can't really explain why, but I can show you. We're going to go down to 135. By flaring what I mean is always keeping the elbow in line with the wrist. So instead of pushing straight, he would push back towards the rack but bring his elbow with him. Go ahead and get everything set. Do everything the same way, except this time I want you to push back towards the rack and bring your elbow with you. See what happened there is immediately when he came off his chest, the barbell fell behind his elbow, and then he couldn't keep his elbow in place with all that. There's a lot of issues that I knew were going to happen just based upon the way that he's built and from doing this for so long. So I would keep him, because he's going to be a raw bencher, at least for now, benching in that straight line because he's going to be stronger that way, it works for his structure better that way. Now if he got in and used jacked up shirts and all that other kind of stuff, well then we need to change his technique to accommodate the shirt. It's not the other way around. You know, the, a lot of the questions that I'm getting is how do you change the programming or the technique that's being done with gear to accommodate the raw lifter? That's not how it works. It's, it's the technique and the, and the programming needs to change to accommodate the gear lifter. All right, so just because you're seeing a lot of programming out there from guys who use gear, don't assume that that programming is because they use it because most of the time, if you look at how they're training and go back eight to ten years before the gear was super jet, it's the same type of program. They haven't changed their training to adjust to the gear. That's why they're not getting the big carryovers like they should. That's a whole different video and it's a whole other topic. So we're going to go ahead and go 185 again for another single. And I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut. And just kind of let him go on his own. The biggest problem that he's having is the upper back tight and keeping, making sure you're in the right starting position. 
So everything else is pretty much locked in. So if you make sure that's right, for you it was your eyes in line with the bar. Everything else should pretty much follow suit. If that doesn't happen, then your elbows are dropping too low. This time I'm going to help them out just by bracing the bar so it's easier for them to pull out. The setup should actually take longer than the set. The other thing I didn't comment on because he's been really good about it is you want to make sure that the barbell stays in line with the wrist and the elbow throughout the whole movement. A lot of times you'll see it fall one way or another. A lot of times you'll see this from the start, especially with younger lifters, or when they press, you'll see it come back and not stay in line, or in some cases, you know, it will come forward. The key is to keep it into the straightest line that you can. And to set up the bench, <clears throat> when I talk about it being exhausting and knocking you out of breath, I'll take my time and I'll set up a bench using a um, using an arch, and I'm sure by the time I'm done, I'll be beat red and won't be able to talk. I personally like to bring the bar forward on the hooks here to brace it. That way it's easier to pull it out and I don't have that distance that I have to walk it through. I'll always start with my eyes under the bar. And with my grip, moderate as far as tightness. And then I'll try to get my feet as far back as I can. Then slide through and start trying to pull up, think right, pull out, air, heels, press. And that would be to do one rep. I would begin working that slowly from 95 pounds all the way up into my top training weight. With 45 pounds, you know, in the bar, I may do it for a zillion reps. You know, I won't work up from one weight to the next. And it's usually bar 95, 135, 185, and so forth. I won't make that next step up until I'm breathing harder, sweating more, and the pain is less than the weight proceeding. So right there, my shoulder hurt, so I would stay with this until the shoulder pain subsided then I would move up. For me, or you know, if it happens to Josh or anybody else, if you're dealing with shoulder pain and it's not subsiding, but you still are dead set on pressing for whatever reason, at that point after probably four sets, I've kind of realized it's not gonna get better. Then I'll go with a man pond or a two board. Usually I like to start with foam first see if that, if, if that helps it because it does compress and it gives me a little bit more range of motion before I would go into a hard board. And this would be just for regular bench sets, not for back separate work or two board or any of the other stuff. So even for a lot of the dynamic work that I've programmed and I've done in the past, if somebody's dealing with pec issues or shoulder issues, you know, it's, it's quite okay to be able to use, you know, low foam, a carpet, or even a single board. <coughs> to be able to work around that injury because <laughs> the last couple inches, while they are important, they're not going to make that much difference because whatever you put on your chest is going to change your technique to a certain degree because uh, you're not going to be able to arch you know, as much as what you think that you can. So I'm going to have him do one more set just to be sure because uh, some time has elapsed. I'm going to go at 135. This time, I'm going to have him do a set of five to see if he can hold the technique for a work set. Or kind of. I mean, it's a low percentage.
go ahead and wrap it. Try to do what I did on my last set, underhand grip the bar. Keep everything else in position. There you go. Now put yourself back down. Yeah, that should hurt. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Pull it out. Big air. <clears throat> One. A little more speed. Two. Three. Down faster. Four. Five. Good. A lot better. The only thing that I changed there, it's been a while since I've shown somebody how to bench, and that's why I got underneath there too, is to get his eyes closer to the bar to bring his body down, I had him underhand grip the bar the way that I did it when I was demonstrating. What that does is it allows you to keep your feet in position, but pull your body up and actually kind of scrunch yourself together more, get your belly higher, and then put yourself back down into even a more uncomfortable position. Real quick, I'm going to show um, a bench position with your feet forward instead of top. Where you put your feet, it's going to be personal preference, but usually I can tell when taking somebody through the bench which is going to work better for them based upon how they bench. It's not really how they're built, it's, it's how they bench and how they position themselves on, on the bench and how they keep their upper back tight. That's why I used that cue at the beginning that JM taught me, and that's where you put your feet on the bench and arch up really high, find that back tightness, then put your feet back down again and try to find it again. Usually wherever they put their feet is going to be where they're going to want to bench from. Another way to bench that I did for years, and actually I think works better for somebody trying to push into a straight line, if they have a little short, if their arms are shorter and not as long would be feet out in front. I guess one thing if you to look at leverages for the bench, it's very, very hard for your hip to ever flex harder or higher than your knee. Okay, so if your knee is higher than what the bench is, and you go to flex with your legs, of course your hip can flex to the height of your knee. You understand what I'm saying? That makes sense? All right, so if my knee is lower than the bench here, it's very hard for my ass to come up, all right? Or if my, if my feet are here, you know, my ass can come up because my knee is just a little bit higher. But now if my feet are out here, I can't get my ass to come up because my knee is lower and no matter how hard I flex, it's not going anywhere, okay? So with the feet out in front, you can get tremendous leg drive, but you got to try, you're still going to be pushing your heels into the floor, but you're going to be trying to rip your feet through the front of your shoe as you press. So the setup's going to be different, you're not going to be able to have anywhere near as much of an arch, but the structure of your body and bar path will actually end up being shorter because of it. So it's, for me it's shorter, you know, because it, it's more accommodating to my leverages. That, I benched that way for years and years until it, it, my shoulder got so hosed, I had to bench a different, a different way. For me, when my feet were way out in front like that and I missed, the bar would come back, okay? And when the bar comes back and you're in a position where the majority of your body weight and your center of gravity is this far forward and it begins to really come back on you, there ain't shit you can do because you don't have any, any leverage up underneath it. Alright, when I'm here and it began to come back, you know, it was easier for me to flare because I had more, you understand what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to explain the concept, but it was easier on my shoulders because of the position that I was in. So I gained a few years because of that. I didn't get any stronger, <laughs> but I gained years. So the technique which is best is going to be the one that's going to have obviously the shortest distance and the healthiest for you. Okay, this was a long series. What I wanted to do here was to go through and pretty much show how I would teach the bench if it was in a seminar setting. So the first videos, that I, I said we would post that precede this. 
You need to watch those just to be able to see the bench technique being explained. What you just saw was how I was showing Josh how to bench the same way I was showing anybody else how to bench. Now everybody's going to be a little bit different as far as what their problems are going to be and how their cueing is going to be. You know, this, this was for him, but pretty much the, the skill level of the bencher it's pretty much all. It's, it's always the same. If I had if I had a group of guys that all bench pretty close to what he does, the problems are all going to be pretty similar. You know, his his problems actually weren't weren't that bad. Generally, the biggest problem that I see is going to be with the legs not being tight and knee and that, or the torso not being tight. Go ahead and get down again real quick. A lot of times I'll be able to come over, brace your knees up, do that, and I won't be able to move here. But I can come here and do that, and then all of a sudden everything kind of like goes to hell. That's probably the biggest mistake is because if this is not tight, the transfer is not going to go through to the bar. So you have to think about that. If the bench press is a total body exercise, but you're only using half the body, how much are you leaving, you know, on, on the platform or on the bar? You can ask any questions that you have you know, in the comments that follow, and, you know, I can answer them, you know, a video or however, if you would like to see somebody else, you know, with longer arms, shorter arms, let me know, we can do it that way as well. I, I asked Josh and, and Rachel, and if they had any questions that you guys may have after watching this video, we all kind of came up blank, so this is going to kind of be open to you guys at this point, so... With that, you know, we will be done with the bench.